April the 25th, 2015 will never be forgotten in Malamchigan. Memories here as scarred as are the mountains, from landslides triggered by Nepal's biggest earthquake in over 80 years. In this community of more than 600 people, 2,500 metres up in Sindhupalchuk, the worst hit region, almost every building was destroyed or damaged beyond repair. Among them was the school supported by Community Action Nepal for more than 15 years. Here was the girls' hostels, which made by the Community Action Nepal. 63 girls were living here, and the earthquakes destroyed the buildings. Purna Gautam, the school principal and CANS chairman, had to be pulled out from under wreckage. Miraculously, the whole school community survived but traumatised. Purna was determined about one thing. I told her, uh, if we did not start the schools immediate, and uh, many children could drop out. And I, I worried about that. And I thought, anyway, we should have start very soon, as soon as possible. It, it destroys the lives of people and destroys the properties. How can we save our lives? It had been a devastating blow to a highly successful rural school, but soon these temporary classrooms were in operation. Formerly a pupil and now teaching at the school, 20-year-old Pasang Yangzhen is clearly still deeply affected a year on by personal tragedy. After an hour, I know my father lost his life and he was gone to the forest for search in, in search of food or for cattle and he lost his life in this forest and I feel very afraid and frightened. I lost, uh, I lost everything. The students' excitement at the prospect now of new permanent school buildings, including hostels being funded by CAN, is evident. We are very lucky to see our school again. Uh, we get our knowledge from our teachers and we can make our future very well. And what do you all want to do? How do you see your own, your own future? I want to be a doctor. I want to be teachers in this school. I want to uh, make a good buildings, bridges, uh, which is safe from earthquake. And lessons from the earthquake are already being put into practice at the new health post CAN is also building at Balamchigang. Metal rods and concrete will provide reinforcement and help him withstanding the shock of any future earthquake. Build back better, it's called. And it means work for local people too. Can pays the salary of the nurse at the health post, Durga Adhikari. Alcohol-related illness and high blood pressure are a large part of her caseload. And she saw the effect of the earthquake on mental health. I see that uh, some of the females have depression due to their loss of their family members and loss of their uh, houses because they have uh, done a lot of hard work to earn the uh, money and to make a house. But one day the earthquake has all taken and so they, due to stress they, uh, they became depressed. It's a road journey of no more than 50 kilometres or so from Malamchigang to Kutumsang, another community that asked for can support long before the earthquake. But even in a vehicle designed for these mountain areas, the going gets tough. The earthquake brought down every building in Kutumsang, a small community highly dependent on trekkers using the famous Helambu Trail. Here too, Can is supporting schools and the health post. Like other local people, Jimmy Sherpa pays a single sum of 130 rupees a year, less than a pound, for medical care. <laughs> Nurse Divaka Tapa also acts as secretary to the local mothers group. They help each other through a micro-credit scheme, using it to buy chickens, soap, even set up small shops. It's a health education opportunity too. Today, long-term complications that can arise from motherhood, provoking the curiosity 
a four-year-old Flatiki Sherpa. Can has always been keen to work away from the well-worn path. Heading down the slope from Kutumsang, ours is the first vehicle to drive a new track constructed with Can's assistance, apart from the bulldozer that made it. We've come to Kiang and a cooperative holding a workshop on organic agriculture. The initiative, with backing from Can, is about helping poor farmers increase their income. The demonstration intended to convince them that nature provides the best pesticide and fertilizer. The earthquake has given it new urgency, and Pasang Wangchok is passionate about the lost opportunities until now. I feel really bad when I see, you know, lots of lorry come with fill of with the food materials uh, from Kathmandu to feed the tourists and everyone over here and goes the empty lorry towards Kathmandu. Close to the border with Tibet, the town of Barabise seems to have recovered its bustling commercial life. But on the edge of the town, the earthquake dealt another devastating blow to a long-standing project dear to Khan and its supporters, flattening the Sindhu School for the Deaf. Ramesh Nepal, deaf himself, teaches sign language to seven-year-old Nisma Tirur and her fellow pupils. There was a particular trauma for the children of being thrown around the school building soundlessly during the earthquake. Khan has always had a special concern for children with disabilities, trying to prevent them being stigmatised. The deaf school puts an emphasis on vocational training as well as formal education to help those who are often disadvantaged in finding work when jobs are all too scarce for everyone. Khan's general manager, Murari Gautam. They can survive themselves. They are not independent with others. After the educations, they go to they go to the for their own home and they can cultivate the, the, their own good farm, as well as they can get the chance of the uh, uh, sign language teachers, and uh, they can work in the restaurant. Some people they they have gone to the abroad for the work, so this type of opportunity they are got. After school, Nisma returns to her parents' shop. Since she's gone to the deaf school, they too have begun to learn sign language. But the earthquake took away their home. Just outside Barabisi in 2014, a massive landslide killed more than 150 people. It also blocked the Songkoshi River. People in Nepal live with vulnerability. After the earthquake, uh, we also uh, changed some structure of the uh, teaching to the community peoples. While our teachers and uh, nurses, they go to the, their own community and they explain about the earthquake also. This type of disaster, not only earthquake, sometimes the very big wind can come and wind also can by effect to their own house and their, their life also. So this type of uh, uh, natural disaster can come many things. So you have to be very careful about that and you have to be very uh, sensibly, uh, you have to construct your, your property and you have to be very careful about these things. So they started uh, new classes also. So this is the, this is the new for, for the can and uh, this new learning to the, all, the, all the peoples. And some of the mountain communities can supports, always only at their request, are beyond any roadhead reached only on foot or by helicopter. It's a half-hour flight from Kathmandu to Bihi in North Gorka. The villagers have a two-day walk to catch a bus. Supplies for Bihi's new health post. Serving communities like this is all part of Can's aim of helping to stem and reverse the drift of remote mountain communities to the cities. The organization that I work for is Can. And then before we started working here, and then other staffs, other Nepali nurses, they used to work here as well. But then there was a lot of problems because the local people here, they don't understand Nepali, they don't speak Nepali, and the uh, nurses, they don't understand the language here. Now, since I'm here, then they come without any help because they, are, they speak their language and I speak their language as well, and it's become so easy for them. 23-year-old Pema Diki nurse and midwife is on the front line of Khan's efforts to tackle poverty and build resilience in Nepal, often among people and in places that receive all too little attention. The 2015 earthquake 
was a deadly reminder of the magnitude of the challenges ahead for everyone. <laughs>